Hi folks, we are continuing with some chapter 4 problems and here we go. A 5 kilogram bucket of water is raised from a well by a rope. If the upward acceleration of the bucket is 3 meters per second squared, find the force exerted by the rope of the bucket. So let's can begin by drawing a little picture. Here's our little bucket and uh, there is a force that is applied to the bucket by the rope. Um, and two things are occurring. One, that force upward is counteracting the force of gravity. Gravity is pulling it downward. But the other thing that the upward force or the tension in that rope is doing, it is also causing the bucket to accelerate. So we can construct our little equation here. The force upward is going to create the force, counteract the force of gravity, and it is going to cause the force of acceleration. So here's what we've got. Uh, force of gravity we know is mass times acceleration of gravity. The force of acceleration is going to be good old Newton's second law, mass times acceleration. And if we take this um, and we are looking for the force exerted by the rope. Force up is our big question mark. That's the thing we're looking for. So I'm just going to write this back down here because I've got lots of room. Um, mass of the bucket, we have a 5 kilogram bucket. Acceleration of gravity is our old friend, 9.8 meters per second squared. Mass of the bucket is 5 kilograms. One more time, it's accelerating upward at 3 meters per second squared. 5 times 9.8 is going to give me 49 newtons, kilogram meters per second squared as a newton. 3 times 5, you remember from elementary school, is 15 kilogram meters per second squared, again, is a newton. And so the force upward exerted by the rope on the bucket is going to be 49 plus 15, which when you add those up is 64 Newton. So that is the upward force caused by that rope on the bucket. Next problem. Two people are pulling a boat through the water via two cables. Each cable makes a 30 degree angle from forward, so this direction is forward. Each cable is symmetrical and makes a 30 degree angle from forward. And each person pulls with a 600 Newton force. So the tension in each one of these cables is 600 Newtons. The boat is pulled through the canal at a constant velocity. Constant velocity, as you know, means the sum of the forces on this object is going to be equal to zero. What is the resistive force of the water on the boat, which is the frictional forces going backwards? Well, you know that if the sum of the forces equals zero, and they must, if it's moving at a constant velocity, what that means is the force forward must equal the force backwards. So let's just take a gander at what's going on. If I take one half of this situation. I'm going to take one person pulling on the barge. So I've got 600 newtons worth of force that's being applied at a 30 degree angle. This is a right triangle. I can find the force forward pulled by one person. So this is going to be the adjacent side. Um, I know the hypotenuse is 600 newtons. I know the angle is 30 degrees. I'm looking for the adjacent. The cosine of an angle is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. The adjacent is going to be equivalent to the cosine of 30 degrees times the hypotenuse, 600. Oops, I wrote 300 and it's 600, my mistake, times 600 newtons. So the forward force is going to be, I'm going to grab my calculator here, uh, cosine of 30 times 600 is going to be rounded off to 3 sig fix, 520 newtons. But that's the forward force exerted by one person. And we have two people pulling the barge. So for two people, 
each one of these is pulling forward at 520 newtons. So the total forward force is going to be 1040 newtons forward. And if it is moving at a constant velocity, that means that must be equal to the force backwards. So the force backwards must be equal to 1040 newtons. There you go. So that is that one. Next problem. Number 30. A cable is supporting a 2,135 kilogram elevator, and it has a maximum strength of 21,750 newtons. What maximum upward acceleration can it give the elevator without breaking? This is very similar to the bucket problem. So we have an elevator, a generic elevator. Um, we have the force up. And that force up is going to counteract two things. It's going to cause a uh, counteract the force of gravity, and it is going to cause the force of acceleration. So that force up is going to provide the force of gravity plus that force of acceleration. Now we know the maximum strength of the cable, which is my force up, is going to be 21,750 newtons. The force of gravity is mass times the acceleration of gravity. The force of acceleration is going to be mass times the acceleration of my elevator. And we want to know the acceleration of my elevator. That's my unknown. So let's continue filling in what we do not know. 21,750 newtons. The mass of my elevator is 2135 kilograms times gravity 9.8 meters per second squared, plus my mass, 2135 kilograms times A, and sorry I squished off the page, so it's right down here where we have a little more room. I'm just going to move it down here. 21,750 newtons. The weight of the elevator is going to be 2135 times 9.8, and that gives me uh, 2,923 newtons plus 2,135 kilograms multiplied by A. How do I get A alone? I am going to subtract 21,923 from both sides. And when I do that, I am going to end up with, let's see, just I'm going to do the math right now in my little calculator, and I end up with 827 newtons is going to be 2135 kilograms multiplied by A, or A is 827 newtons divided by 2135 kilograms, and it ends up being a maximum acceleration of 0.387 meters per second squared. Where did the meters per second squared come from? I have a newton divided by a kilogram. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared divided by a kilogram. That is a kilogram meter per second squared. Invert and multiply one over kilograms. Those cancel. I end up with meters per second squared. I must have done my algebra right. All right, y'all. See you later. Bye-bye.